Hey guys, we are live. So starting earlier than usual, so my energy level might be a little lower, but I think that's okay. Uh, so we got John joining us. He's been on this channel a million times, I think. Uh, I don't know. If, well, we could do a brief introduction. A million yeah, and one now. You, got, you guys have seen him on this channel many times. So we're, largely, we're going to do a Q&A. John is going to announce a new program that he has uh, coming up. And uh, yeah, we'll just do a live Q&A for, I don't know, for maybe like an hour or something like that. We won't go for crazy too long. Is, uh, I have a crazy ass debate tonight, which will be interesting. By the way, I don't know if I told you this. Which yet. debate is that? I'm debating a uh, a dominatrix, a female dominatrix, and her male sex slave. Wow. Yeah, I'm quite excited for that one. I want to see. Like, I'm just your, tra this your channel is going off like uh, <laughs> like a strange land. Like you like debate black pillars, feminists, social justice warriors, now dominatrix people. <laughs> Yeah, they reached out to me, but I'm pretty excited. I'm just imagining like Mr. Slave from South Park, so that's kind of what I have in my head. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that. That's what came to my head when you first said that. But he wasn't like a dominatrix, but he did have a slave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, okay. Have so you seen, did I show you the tattoo? I got the the DDD. Yeah, you, know, you posted the pictures in the group chat. I saw that. Oh yeah. Uh, remember you asked me if you should get a hand tattoo, and you said no. I think right. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan. Everyone, of everyone said no. But anyways, I'll just show people really quick. This is going to fade a little bit because they just retouched it. But basically, I have a chick here, and I wanted to symbolize the 1500 lay count. D stands for 500 in Roman numerals. So if I hit 2K, it'll be, I'll pop another D over here. But for now, it's also a good cup size. What do you, what do, you do if you get over 2500? You only have four fingers. I've got the other hand. Oh, okay. No, or I can I can always start using like the M or whatever as well for a thousand. <laughs> um, I don't I don't expect it to get too much more out of control. But anyways, okay. So yeah, for those of you that don't know me, I run the channel John Anthony Lifestyle. Um, I've been doing formal games since 2009, coaching since 2012. Uh, I actually hit up Alex when he first came onto the scene because I, I saw he was doing some really awesome stuff with online and texting. I was like DMing him offering to to give him some cold approach uh knowledge that i possessed and, and to shoot the shit around what we we're doing with texting and online um he's currently the only channel i endorse uh on my channel he's the only recommended channel that i have on there and uh but more of my background um <clears throat> i took kind of a very systematic approach to game so i've i've built it out like kind of like a sales funnel and measuring conversion metrics from level to level. So you have your online game, day game, night game, leading down to phone numbers. Then you have your texting skill leading down to dates. And then how your ability is to run the debates, close the dates. And uh, did I say clo close the debates? Oh, yeah, <laughs> close the debate. I was, I was like reading the chat and someone said debate. And I was like, close the debates. Close the dates and uh, retain the girls. So um, have you're a fuck close, ton of people. You close the sex slave guy? <laughs> Have, have thousands of uh, pictures with girls, lots of them in hookup situations, hundreds of hours of infield. I have over 100 infield pulls on camera, and I had that by 2014, by the way. And also um, hundreds of testimonials and this and that. Okay, so check out my channel. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with me. But I also wanted to announce before we get into the Q&A, we're running a virtual two-day boot camp. It's going to be this coming Friday and Saturday, so a week from today. It's July 15th and 16th. The link's in the description on this live already for that. And it's going to be um, like my full cold approach training, like what you would get on a live boot camp in full. Like it's not watered down or anything like that, just, just because it's virtual. You're going to get the exact same training. Okay. And then you'll get my virtual support with me and three other coaches in a Telegram group when you're out and about doing cold approach on that Friday and Saturday night. Okay. It's only 27 bucks to join for general admission. And there's no catch. Okay. The, the, we're trying to blow guys away with value, just dumping, you know, my full cold approach system and let, it, let them see what kind of good results they can get so that they want to get trained on the rest of the system. That's basically the motivation from our end. And you can upgrade for like how Like if they're out and about, like how, how can you like watch their technique or how does that part work? Is there like we won't be able, we won't be able to see their technique, but um, guys will say like, hey, this happened. What do I do when this happens? Uh -huh. Like I, I wasn't able to sexualize. What's the proper way to sexualize? So we're going to be giving like the, they're basically going to be self-reporting what went wrong uh -huh. and then we'll be providing feedback there so but they will but just the training portion of the cold approach stuff is incredibly valuable on its own i'm going to be giving the, my full cold approach system how to open how to move things forward how to never run out of things to say how to isolate how to escalate how to sexualize your verbals 
how to deal with the cock blocks, how to seed the pull in the first half of the night versus the second half of the night. What's the 14 major objections that, they, that come up when you try to pull in one of the 14 optimal responses? So the, the full system will be explained. And then for people that upgrade to the VIP, which is 97 bucks more, then they get access to the Telegram group and there'll be live Q and A's and you know, all the details are explained in that link. So just go check out that link in the description to find out more about that. Interesting. I'm still trying to imagine like how that will work because the guys will have to honestly self-report which a lot of people yeah. don't, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, it went great, man. Like I totally had her. And in reality, they were like sucking. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's obviously that's obviously a limitation. But again, the price is only 27 bucks. Right. And then we're going to be like very often, like in practice, this is what usually happens. Like I've been running boot camps since 2012. In practice, once I give that full cold approach training system, I make it very straightforward, simplified efficient effective whatever a lot of guys are able to go and pull on the first night just from knowing the system right just by going and executing the system they're able to pull on the first night so that so that gets them a lot of the way there and then they'll be able to self-report the only thing we won't be able to see is like their body language and, and different things like that but it'll still we'll be able to fix a lot of stuff and they'll be already like way ahead of where they were because they'll be executing an optimized system mm, okay got it got it um, cool. All right. Um, uh, so yeah. So what do you think? We should we just take some Q and A and shit? Yeah. Or let me address, let me also address the Kevin thing real quick. Okay. So thumb, 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 thumb. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, and this isn't just me like shit talking, you know, cause it's, it's stupid. It's like a high school drama thing. Okay. So I brought coach white pill on my channel because he told me a lot of fucked up shit that Kevin allegedly did. Okay. I let Coach White Pill come on my channel. I'm, I don't endorse Coach White, Coach White Pill. I'm not affiliated with Coach White Pill. None of that. Okay. He was Kevin's old business partner. He told me a whole lot of fucked up shit with a lot of details. Okay. Seems like a pretty straight shooter. Maybe, maybe he was lying about some stuff. Not, I wasn't able to discover that he was lying about some stuff. The thing is, is he came on my platform and he said all this stuff. Okay. That pissed off Kevin. And then Kevin has gone forth and just put out assertions without any, without any evidence that I'm a scammer, that I'm a fraud, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, the biggest fraud in the manosphere, the biggest fraud on YouTube, he just keeps going more and more extreme. Okay, the reality is I, there's zero evidence anywhere of me scamming or being a fraud about anything. And also I have the most proof in the industry by far. As I said, thousands of pictures, hundreds of hours of infield, hundreds of testimonials, lots of top guys vouching for me. Alex was in groups with me for many years then saw me posting, you know, kind of to the point of annoyance, like every close, right? I did that on YouTube or not on YouTube, on Instagram, I posted like 300 closes in a row. And so like, he's coming at a guy that has literally the most proof in the industry of his results, and that has no proof of anything scamming or being a fraud. Okay. So he started throwing these terms around that he's a fraud, he's a scammer, etc, with no backup. So I sent him a cease and desist. Okay, for those of you that, that aren't aware, I sued Modern Life Dating last year for slandering me. And he was making a bunch of videos, just making up a whole bunch of shit, trying to convince people that I was, you know, scamming and fraud and stuff. He's currently being sued in the U.S. and in Japan where he lives. Okay, so there's two active lawsuits there. Oh. So I said, I, I'm not, you know, lawsuit happy, but I, I'm going to defend my reputation, my business when someone's going to go run their mouth and make stuff up. So I sent Kevin a cease and desist. Okay. And as of last night, he's putting out a live stream, placing me and Coach Whitepill at the bottom of the, you know, credibility rank. Why? Because he got exposed on my channel with coach white pills. So, okay. Put them to the bottom and say they're worse than fresh and fit. Again, anyone with half a brain knows that that doesn't make any sense. There's zero evidence of me scamming or being a fraud about anything. He's just butthurt that he got blasted by me and coach white pill. Okay. However, he made a critical mistake on that live stream last night. Okay. Where he made more defamatory statements after I'd sent a cease and desist. He said that I'm on the spectrum. Okay. There have never been, you can't, that's patent de defamation. You can't, make a, a comment about someone's psychological condition that isn't true. I've never been diagnosed with autism or anything like, like that. Okay. He also said, I'm padding my lay count with trans women. Okay. That's not true either. That's a false statement of fact. Okay. He also said that I'm on steroids. I've never touched steroids in my life. Okay. So, and, and the whole idea, he thinks he's safe. Because, what's up? I take steroids. <laughs> yeah, well, you, have, you have Lyme disease. Um, what was I going to fucking say? Oh, he thinks he's safe by, you know, throwing around the word scam and fraud, scammer and fraud as an opinion. OK, however, and I've already spoken to lawyers in Texas, okay, where Kevin lives with mommy and daddy. And 
it is actually defamation when it's doing damage to your business. So if he's trying to strip all my credibility because he's butthurt about me and Coach White Pill exposing who Kevin really is, aka someone who came into the space in 2020 as a personal trainer, no credentials, no qualifications, no fucking blood, sweat, and tears in this game whatsoever. In my opinion has zero place in this space. Okay, him and Alex are friends. I respect that. That's Alex's business separately. My own opinion is he has no business in this space whatsoever. He's just a little punk. Okay running his mouth, okay, just trying to talk about people in the space and stir up drama, okay, ride people's coattails. He has no, and he even went on record saying he had an approach in six months. He's scared to approach. Coach Whitepill said it takes Kevin six months or six dates to close. And like, and, and Kevin thinks the game is mostly looks, which, you know, places him more towards the black pill category. Kevin resents people with game. And so he's trying to war with the best guy, or at least the guy that shows the most proof so that he can have some little bit of relevance, okay? So I can tell you from my side that now I'm going to hire a lawyer in Texas, okay? And Kevin will be given one last warning, okay? And he's also going to be ordered to remove the defamatory pieces of content, either the sections where I mentioned in those videos or the whole videos completely. If Kevin does not comply, he will be served pretty rapidly with a lawsuit, okay? On, on YouTube, Kevin's saying, bring on the lawsuit, bring on. John Anthony's broke. I'm a multimillionaire, okay? And I will go to the ends of the earth to defend my business, just like I did with Modern Life Dating, okay? He showed the cease and desist on, on his live streams as well. And then he shit his pants when he was served in Tokyo in his building, okay? And, and served in Japan, in uh, Miami before his hot dude con, okay? Right before he spoke, he was served by a process server. And he's going to be on the hook now for all that dumb shit he said and all the damages that were recorded as a result, Okay. So yes, I call out all the real scammers with evidence, okay? But if someone's gonna come at me and claim that I'm a scammer or a fraud amongst a whole bunch of other defamatory claims, when there's no evidence for it, okay? Just because he's butthurt and thinks he's cool, thinks he's above the law that I won't do shit, he's wrong, okay? Alex thinks it's a wrong move of me to go and, and make a lawsuit. He thinks I should debate Kevin. I think Kevin is a punk ass bitch and I, I have no interest in debating Kevin or collaborating with him in any capacity, okay? so. That's where I stand on that. We don't need to. <laughs> that was quite time. the monologue. <laughs> we don't need to waste our time. I mean, that's that's the whole issue. I didn't want to interrupt you because you look like you were in a nice flow, but <laughs> I was I was just kind of like. Not I mean, it's a, it's just funny to me. It, it shows how butthurt a fucking loser can get when you when you when he gets called out and then, oh, he's mm -hmm. at the bottom of the manosphere. He's in the F tier. He, better yet, he's in the Z tier, negative infinity, right? Like. It's like, it's like he's being a little kid to place me below fresh and fit when I have the most empirical objective proof in the industry of my own results and the results of my clients is just completely nonsensical. OK, and anyone that thinks like, oh, I'm just trying to like, you know, rule with an iron fist and like sue anyone that gets in my way. No, I, I said in the season assist to Kevin, you may think this is a bluff. OK, Modern Life Dating did. And now he's being sued for over a million dollars. OK, go ahead you know, test me basically was the message. And Kevin is testing me. So now I will respond accordingly. And th that's it. So there's not, uh, there's not anything else to say about that. But everyone's messaging me. Hey, uh, Kevin says you're a fraud. I, I respond to everyone. Kevin's butt hurt because he got exposed on my channel by Coach White Pill. So now he's going to tell everyone I'm the biggest fraud and the biggest scammer. Okay, it has zero basis, just like when Modern Life Dating did it. But Kevin wants his little two minutes of fame. Okay, and he'll have that. And he thinks he can be like Mr. Tough Guy because he's broke living at home, according to Coach White Pill, of course. And so he has nothing to lose. Okay, what will happen is he will get sued in Texas where he lives. Then he will get a gag order that he can't talk about me anymore. Okay, he won't be able to afford counsel, so it probably will end up in a default judgment unless he tries to defend himself. Okay, or get a I don't I don't know if there's public defenders like we'll do it pro bono in in uh, civil cases, Not but. Case, yeah. When he gets a judgment on his record, the little money that he does get in his life from his YouTube revenue will be siphoned until the judgment is paid. Kevin will not be able to buy a, a house or a car. Okay. And I will make Kevin's life a living hell. Okay. So that's a message to Kevin. Okay. And, and he, and he's, he's all for it. Kevin's a tough guy. So we will, we will, I will report everything publicly too, because okay? it's all going to be public record. So Kevin can be tough guy and, and we'll see where that goes. Okay. I'm not living at home. I've, I've made multiple millions in business and will make multi millions more. And this is just a little fucking gnat that needs to be swatted. Okay. All right. Let's jump into questions. <laughs> well, and, for the, and, for, and for the record, I want to clear up one other thing. Okay. Go ahead. Is 
it does bother me on some level that since Alex and I have a, a very strong alliance in the space, a lot of people are confused why Kevin can be saying such terrible things about me, but coming on Alex's streams regularly. Okay? Those two things are separate. Alex does not agree with Kevin. Whenever Kevin has said bad things about me or said that I'm full of shit on the streams, Alex does defend me to Alex's credit. Okay. So make sure you don't think Alex is not choosing a side here. Okay. He thinks it's fucked up what Kevin's saying. He probably doesn't agree with some of the stuff I'm saying about Kevin. So this has nothing to do with Alex. Okay. This is between me and Kevin, but don't think that, you know, Alex isn't, doesn't think I'm legitimate just because Kevin is saying these things and Kevin comes on, on his channel. Alex has told Kevin on multiple streams that I'm legit, that he's seen tons of proof of me being legit with his own eyes and, and in WhatsApp groups and so on and so forth. And, you know, that it's ridiculous, but Kevin has a feud with me because of what happened with Coach White Pill. So that's enough about that. We don't really need to to waste time on the stream about it, but I just wanted people to be, to understand. All right, let, let me let me comment a few things. Yeah, I, I do think, obviously, I think John is legit. Otherwise, I wouldn't have you on a million times on my channel. Uh, so that goes without saying. Uh, that's simply because I've gone out with you. But uh, there is a, there's a big irony here, and the irony is, uh, like, so apparent in my face, and is that you guys both – have gone on baseless tangents about each other. Uh, you did during that stream with uh, when Coach Whitepill was on your channel. Now, it was mostly Coach Whitepill talking, but because it's on your channel, that still puts some of the responsibility on you. Uh, and Doesn't uh, that go back to you when he's, when he's saying shit about me on your channel? Yes, to some extent, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take responsibility for that. And uh, Kevin's done that about you also to a large extent. I think you guys just both ran with these, like, you guys just both hate each other. You just both ran with these narratives to like, okay, what can we do to really, really fucking hurt the other person? Which I think is well, like, like when you when you guys had the stream about who's the best in the game, you were like, I have to give credit where credit's due. John Anthony Lifestyle is on yeah, the list. He, he doesn't like you, man. Like he he hates you. And then Kevin said, Oh, really? I I wouldn't think so because he seems monotone on YouTube, right? And you're like, No, I've seen him get laid a ton. And he's like, Well, I wouldn't think so. And again, it's like. Why is this guy's opinion about anything relevant or, or worth talking about? Okay. I don't understand why he's in discussions about who's the best in the game when he has no place in the space. Okay. He has no qualifications, no credentials. I could go get one of my random friends to come on and start telling everyone on YouTube who's the best in the space. You know, the, a guy that's not even in the game. What, what good is that? Right. And, and what if my friend was like, well, I don't think Alex is legit. He, he seems like he wouldn't get girls. I'm like, no, dude, he gets tons of girls. Oh, I disagree with you. It's like people do that to me all the time. There's like every single day there's a new TikToker. The, the point is, is, it's not like Kevin, like Kevin is some veteran for, money for, for all that show. Like I, those videos come out about it's me. not like Ke Kevin's some veteran in the game. From what I've heard, he's at like a newbie level. Okay. And, and and like he doesn't have any like results for himself to prove or any kind of results for he's not teaching. He claims he's not a dating coach, but he wants to talk about infield breakdowns and who's good in the space and all this stuff so it, to me it, it's just like confusing like why anyone gives a yeah. shit about this guy well it would kind of be like okay so let me kind of explain that so i talk about fitness from time to time but i'm not a fitness expert right it's a different standard that you hold to when you're a dating coach than when you're not a dating coach like spencer cornelia for example we don't hold him to the standard of like oh spencer needs to bang a bunch of chicks or he needs to have a good game because he's not really a dating coach he's more of like a commentator kevin is in that same exact category he's not actually a dating coach i know coach whitefield keeps saying he is but i've actually took a like we've talked extensively about the program he's building there's no dating elements to it if i found out kevin was building like a dating product i would be like okay that's kind of like weird uh that he's doing that and i probably would be like okay something is up with that but He's not. That's the thing. So it's a different standard that you and I hold to because we self-identify as dating coaches. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. All right. So what questions do you guys have? We'll just do Q&A for, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes or something like that. Uh, no troll questions, please. Okay. And by the way, that goes for any other motherfucker in the space too. Okay, I, the purpose, you know, of, of taking MLD head on after all that shit was to set an example. Okay, Kevin obviously thinks he's untouchable because he's a broke piece of shit living at home. So he will find out, you know, what happens when there's a massive judgment on your record, and it, it will fuck up the rest of his life. I feel bad for him in a way because okay, the tough well, guy thing. 
will only go that, so that, far. That's another one, John, right there. Like, I don't actually think he's living at home. That's the thing. Coach Whitepill said that he recognizes Kevin's YouTube setup as, as his parents' house. Yeah, but Coach Whitepill is not to be trusted. I've I've seen that guy lie about so much random shit. He, he's literally said, oh, I, I will go on Alex's channel if he asks me. And then I, like, I ask him and then he just goes. Yeah, he, he's like, okay. Well, he was he was paying Kevin's rent before Kevin went to, to live on A.G. Hayden's couch. And then he said he's he believes Kevin is now back home because his YouTube setup is his parents' house. So who knows if that's true? What yeah, let's discuss say? this one. Then, you know, moving right along to the, the next piece of shit. <laughs> I like Adam, but go ahead. What's, what's your thoughts on that? The 100% close rate. Where to begin? Okay. Imagine <laughs> in saying in door to door sales that you have 100% close rate. Okay. That means no one, no matter how much they don't want the product, no matter how bad of a mood they're in, et cetera, they go to the door. Oh, this motherfucker. Oh, wait, it's Adam Lyons. Uh, where do I sign up? Right. Think about what a ridiculous claim that is. And especially compared to the real stat, which is 10%, okay, at a high level. So when I interviewed Paul Janka, who Alex has had on his channel as well, Paul's actually coming back on my channel on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And Paul's, I said to Paul, I said, when I hit uh, 1,000 girls in December 2018, I had about 10,000 phone numbers in my phone. And so I realized the close rate is about 10%. And Paul's like, yep, like 9 to 11% like is, is where I've landed and like other, other top guys that I've known. I'm like, cool, confirmation. Okay. Then you have Adam Lyons. Now, for those of you that don't know the backstory of Adam Lyons, he was heavily associated with the mega scam internet marketing product called Tower Badass. Okay. Adam Lyons also married a chick that's like a four and a half and a, another chick that's maybe a six and a half or seven. Or two girls. No, I don't think so. Let's pull it up. Not, maybe not married, but living with them. I, I'm pretty, no, I'm pretty sure they got married because I relooked this up after you had him on the channel. Lyons. The three of them were raising a baby together, but it's two very average looking girls. One of them like a lot more average than the other. Neither are hot. And he has charisma. He smiles a lot. Okay. But he, it's false statistics, okay? Uh, obviously. Can you guys imagine a guy, like, doing 100 cold approaches and closing all 100 of those girls? And for guys that don't know about game and how it works and, and how the conversion rates go down from through the funnel, I guess that's plausible. That means, <laughs> like, imagine any of those girls had a boyfriend or husband, okay? They're all going to cheat with Adam Lyons. Imagine those girls are in a bad mood or they don't like it, how Adam Lyons looks or they don't look like Adam Lyons' type or Adam Lyons, you know, there, it's, a, it's just an insane thing to try to even discuss why it's false. But go ahead. Do you, why don't you give your input on that? Oh, I, I think it's very clear that he's lying, like 100% clear. Uh, there's zero chance that's true. However, if he wanted it to be more, more of a believable of a lie, he would have said something that was more realistic. Okay, But then again, in these video sales letters of these scam marketing products, they make claims like, Oh, in the second day of getting this program, 80% of the people have their first threesome. And everyone's like, where do I sign up? Okay, so it's to his advantage to get more business and more respect to go and say false statistics. Okay, and he's and he's not above that because he collaborated heavily with a very big scam product. I think he's just counting totally differently. He's counting, like I will agree, he's counting in a really bizarre, weird way. But the way he's counting it, uh, I don't know if you saw the podcast, but we went back and forth on this for half an hour and then finally clicked to me. The way he's counting is based on the girls that show interest that he's talking to, that he's interested Still in. Still false. Still 100% false. You know as well as I do. Still 100% false. If you qualify it as like based on a girl who I've been talking to for two hours, who's like very interested in me, it would still be. Doesn't false. matter. There's a million but things that come be, thousands of times. There's a million things out yeah. of his control. Yeah, but it could be like ninety percent if you if you go off. No, we couldn't. You know, way. out of out of no. the girls, out of the girls who are like really into you, who want to fuck you, they're like super into you. Like, how did he say it exactly? Girls that want to fuck him, he fucks. He he didn't say it like that, but that's kind of the people way. People said that. girls that uh, people told me a bunch of people all messaged me. Hey, hey, Adam Lyons claiming one hundred percent. It's like each day yeah. there's like uh, he, different he, fucking he said, retardation he said it, everywhere. He said he said it very weirdly and incorrectly, but I think that's the way. He was trying to – that's what it was in his mind. That's, that's what I'm saying because I am talk, I talked to Tim about this for half an hour. Like we had this conversation for 30 minutes. I just kept asking the same question over and over again. And that's kind of, I think, how his mind is working. I don't know. That's just kind of me uh, trying to figure him out. But yeah. So you believe – okay, I'm, I'm curious what you believe about this. You believe that if a girl it shows interest that there's a at least a 90 – someone could 
legitimately close 90 percent no i don't think it's gonna be i think it's still gonna be an exaggeration i don't think it's gonna be 90 percent. but i think that if you go off the uh the girls who are talking to you who are interested in you who are showing signs of indicators if you're at a private party uh it could be above 50 percent i don't think i think like if you, that's a totally different metric than random girls that you see like it is just a totally different metric like out of random girls you see on the street yeah it's not going to be more than 10 percent. but if you're at a party and the girl's talking to you and she's showing signs of indication it could be over 50 percent out of those leads is that how he how he framed it is it is he's at a like a private event and girls are interested that's he didn't never said any of that directly but that's kind of the way i interpret it i i would still I, say I, like that there's person. no way that's even remotely possible in my I, and it's not even my opinion. There's no way that's remotely possible. I understand all the fucking ins and outs there at this point, and you you do as well. Think about what a ridiculous thing. Think about like this: you have you said you have like an eighty percent close ratio on dates, right? Yeah, that's totally different than your less than ten percent close ratio of girls that you see, right? You see how the ratio can really, really change based on the starting point. Yeah, but to claim close to 100 percent is, is always BS. Like Ultimate Man Project, I think David Swift was was claiming. Yeah, of course. I, I think it's still an exaggeration. I think it's probably closer to like 70. 80. A massive exaggeration. Yeah, 70. and a lot, and which is also a lie. Okay, but again, like you guys have to look at where these people come from. Okay, Tower Badass was just a very well put together video sales letter by John Benson. Okay, he was a famous copywriter. And they're making $50,000 a day delivering you fucking dog shit. And I've spoken to so many people over the years. Oh, I've, I've tried Tao Badass for four years and I didn't get anywhere. And I'm like, uh, you know, that's a scam product written by internet marketers, right? And they're like, oh, that makes sense. I spoke to the creator of it. I met the creator randomly at this fucking party in San Diego. And he was drunk. And I was like, that product's like pretty much bullshit, right? And he's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, boom, I wish I would have fucking videotaped. Oh, cool. Who was this that you talked to? Tim Houston. He was the creator of what? He's an internet marketer in California. And this was in like 2014. What's his what's his what's his correlation between him and Adam Lawrence? Like how are they related? Tim Houston was the internet marketer behind Tower Badass, and he brought in Adam Lyons to be part of that whole thing. Adam um, Lyons was doing a bunch of their live shit. Um, okay. Next question. Thoughts on Rufi? Um, I don't think his game was ever that good, but I really, really respect how he handled all the reporters that were slandering him. Okay, so for those of you that aren't aware of the Rufi scandal back in the day, by the way, in the modern day, he's like gone full God mode. And he's like, I mean, I don't mean God mode, like doing well in the game. He's he's like very religious now. And I think he's like stepped away from the game. But um, I really liked how he handled himself. Basically, he put out a, an article that said like women are to blame on some level if they put themselves in a bad situation and something bad happens. And the feminists twisted that and said that Rush V is advocating for legalizing rape. Is that, is that what they were saying the claim was? Uh, I don't, I, I didn't follow the whole Rush V thing at all. So I, I don't know. They, they twisted it and they made it sound like he was being like a rape apologist or something like that. Okay. And then they put these sensationalist articles out. It spiraled out of control and it ended up with people uh, leaking his parents' address online. And then was there was he like, with his parents, though? Yeah, because he was oh. at his parents' house, um, like visiting or something. People leaked the address, and there was like reporting crews and like people that wanted to kill him, and he had to hire private security. And what he did was he held a press conference, and he brought all the reporters in, and he said, you should all be fucking ashamed of, ashamed of yourselves. He said, I did not make that statement. You all know I didn't make that statement. And if something comes down on me or my family, it's in, the blood is on your hands. And he and he called them all out. And one of the reporters that asked the question, he's like, "Do you even lift, bro?" <laughs> it's like, the, but the way he handled it, you know, that part was funny. But the is way he, show, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, I want to watch that. So yeah, I thought it was beautiful. He, he stood up, up right to all the reporters. Yeah, let's pull yeah. it up right, right now. I want to see this. Rush V. Yeah. This was in this was in D.C. I believe. Reporter. And, Four or five years, three, four, five years ago. Uh, okay, I'm gonna share my screen and then let's see if we can find it. Make sure you share the audio so guys can see this part. Yeah, of course. Um, 
I sort of, I kind of wish that would happen to like me because if uh, reporters went to like my mom lives in like literally the woods with like bears and shit. If like fucking reporters went there, they would either get lost or get eaten by fucking like wildlife. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> All right, Rush yeah, Rush. yeah, they, yeah. They said they were calling. They were saying that he was advocating legal rape, which is not what he was advocating at all. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I can't find the video now. Did you find it? Well, no, I'm trying to find it. The reporter. I want to see the reporter confrontation, or it should. Should I type in press conference? Yeah, but it, this was this was done in like a rented room. You'd see him, and it's it's like it's like a room where there's the reporters are all around him. It's like a very intimate setting. Let's try it. Meet Rushmi. He's, He's a, a new. New. He's a spy. He claimed. No, this is just like a compilation video. I don't know where it is, man. I've heard about this video. I've just never seen it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, he, he went hard. God, like he went hard into the God shit. I think he um, got rid of a lot of that stuff. That's too bad. Okay, wait, there we go. My press conference with the Washington, D.C. media. I think this is it. Oh, I think this is it. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right, let's watch it. Wait. Just watch the very beginning, guys. And if he's, if he's like, posturing and stuff in the beginning, then just... just All right, are you ready? That's oh, 34 minutes. There's a little bit of an echo. Is that yes? Oh. Put it on full screen. Where do you work from? Uh, Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. <laughs> this is fucking okay. awesome, by the way. Yeah, sure. I don't know how she got in here. Someone must have have told her. All right. So first, I'm going to make a statement, and then you can ask me anything. Cool. All right. So the world has gone insane in the past week. Why? Number one, I had organized meetups around the world for men to enjoy a social happy hour, just to meet in private, to talk about anything, work, politics, girls, just to meet. Okay. Number two, a year ago, I wrote an article, How to Stop Rape. This article to a 10-year-old was obvious that I didn't intend to legalize rape or cause harm against women. But starting on Sunday, a lot of you have lied by saying I am a pro-rape advocate. He wants women to get hurt. And then the third thing, you said the meetups are about rapists. They want to gather to learn how to rape. They're gonna exchange tips. Some of you have called it a rape rally. A rape, what the hell is that? A rape rally. So because of that, I've been all over the world in terms of the news. Over 100 articles have been written. The result is what? I'm currently the most hated man in the world. Governments from all over the world have uh, talked about me. Australia has tried to keep me out. They called up their Navy to keep me out because they thought I'll sit down but save my mom. So I'm, I'm glad. But in I, you have to understand that your work and the work of your own, own colleagues have incited a mob. Publishing your, None. Not None. Well, it's not my you fault. Did you that, regret not adding that earlier on? I regret that people are so stupid that I have to put that in there right now. I never imagined. All right, well, I think we get the gist of it. This is going to get a little boring, but yeah. Uh, okay, so he he went on like uh, whatever. He confronted reporters. Yeah, that's cool. Better than Julian. Uh, yeah, he ha he handled it like a man. He fucking stood up for himself. Okay, Julian crumbled like a huge pussy. Showed his true colors, and fucking almost burst into tears. There's a couple of sections of that interview where he was like close to crying. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would. I want to watch that whole thing offline. All right, let's yeah, go it's back. awesome. Can you send the link to the video in this chat? Yeah, I'll post the link in the chat. Hang on one second, guys. Uh, but I, I feel I feel his pain. Like there's feminists that have, um, you know, they painted me out to be on the level of a school shooter because because I posted on RST Nation, and so did two other guys that were actual school shooter school shooters and killed themselves. 
that like literally two guys shot up schools and killed themselves. And then they have me. And then they're like, these three people posted on a pickup forum. They're all the same. Right. And it's, it's like, what the fuck? Another article implies that I'm a convicted rapist. Okay. Even though I've never been accused or charged with rape ever. That still gets tossed around in the community. Oh, is that that guy that's a rapist? RST was actively telling people that were debating between RST programs and my programs. Oh, that guy's a rapist. Right? Again, like what the fuck? Right. Never once been accused, never once been charged with rape. Yeah. I get so, it. yeah, I thought that was cool how Roosh actually stood up for himself and like put all those reporters in their place. And, and he told them like anything bad that happens is on your hands. Um, but yeah. Pop another question up just so we can keep the flow going. I do that shit like five times a week with the uh, TikTokers. Yeah. I stand up for myself all the time. I'll, I'll, I confront them if they have the balls to come on the live stream. But I guess it's not the same as a bunch of reporters. We'll see. What health issues does your mom and dad have? Where do you go to high school? How old is everyone in your family? Do you have health insurance? <laughs> do you have health insurance, John? That's the big question. What the, is this a serious question? I think so. I think it's just someone who's really curious. A lot of this is like very private information here. <laughs> well, just answer what you feel comfortable. Is this for me? I Well, we can both answer. My, uh, my parents don't have any health issues because I give them an optimal supplement and food regimen with lots of extensive testing so that we can modify any values based on quantitative metrics. I send them to a longevity center where they get full body MRIs once a year. They can scan for cancer, heart disease, or aneurysms coming in advance. And so I'm extremely, that's a huge interest of mine on the side is health and longevity. I'm not going to go into where I went to high school or how old everyone is in my family. I think that's a weird question. <laughs> All right, let me let me answer this. Let me answer this question. Uh, what health issues? My mom has a diabetes type of thing, but she's she pre, she's pre diabetic. No, she, no, never mind. She has high blood pressure. My dad is really healthy. Where did I go to high school? Pascack Valley High School. How old is everyone in your family? My dad is fifty seven. My mom's fifty five. Uh, I'm an only child. Do you have health insurance? Yes, I do. What the fuck? GTFO. I don't even know what that stands for. Cool. Yeah, it seems like it was a troll question, but I like. Uh, Sometimes fucking around with troll questions. All right. Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> oh, no, you dumbass. This is what a woman was asking me. Well, now that you've called me a dumbass, I'm not going to actually give you the answer. No, this dude's actually cool. I've actually spoken to that dude over email. He has one of my products. Uh, what are you debating, Steve the Dean, uh, on Tuesday, I believe? You talked to him, didn't you? Yeah, I really like the the way Steve carries himself. I think he has an extremely strong frame. I, I think he's he's like a natural. And I think that he reminds me a lot of my uncle, who's like one of the best naturals I know. They both kind of carry themselves the same way and, um, you know, talk about the game the same way. So I don't agree with all his strategy recommendations, but I think in terms of mindset and internal frame that he's very good. Mm. Apparently, he like yells at his uh, at people who call in, though. That's that's what people want me to debate him about. He yells why? He yells like if it's deserved. I don't know. I haven't watched. I always do my research like a day or two beforehand. So I'll. Do I mean, he's just, he just stands up for himself. Like he like you know he's a guy that's not gonna like put up with any shit from anybody. So I mean, he seemed he seemed really cool in the chat that we've been having so far. Uh, yeah, I think I think he's. Cool. I'll, I'll I'll do my research the day before. Okay. Yeah, we have a guy asking about our dick sizes, so we'll skip that. Uh, can you get your Slayer uncle on stream if possible? Yeah, I, I um, the thing is, like, I, I like made some video. That his wife knows about my fucking channel and stuff, and so he's a little worried about. Like, I made a video about marriage, and I was talking about how he's not happy with his wife and this and that. He was all worried she was going to find that. So I could ask him, and we could, you know. I don't know if he's comfortable showing his face, but I've learned like some really, really key important lessons about the game in terms of boundaries, carrying yourself, the nature of, you know, different parts of, of the game and stuff like that. Um, but he, it's coming from like a natural standpoint, but you can incorporate a lot of that stuff in. Do you think he'll do it? I don't know. I'm going to ask him because a lot of people are requesting it. Cause I, I mentioned again on the Steve uh, interview that I have an uncle Steve that's, the best natural I know. And people are like, get him on, get him on. Mm. 
I'm going to bring on, this is something you probably want to tune into too, I, I would assume. My original business partner from 2013, Josh, he's the guy that's in a lot of my infields. Yeah, I've seen, seen videos of him, yeah. He's super, he's super cool, super funny. Uh, we like reconnected in the past year. He was like married for a bit and he got divorced. Uh, he's going to come on my channel tomorrow night at um, 9 p.m. Eastern. And we're just going to, you know, talk about game and, and you know, be fucking out of control. Mm. <laughs> If you could only choose Owen, Julian, Todd, who are you going with? Julian. Yeah, same. But, you know, I I don't think – Julian was okay back in the day. You know, he was the best one out of the RSD camp, but he ended up marrying a chick that's like debatably a six or seven, even though he put out a product called 10 Game. and had a website called mygameisa10.com. I always make the joke, my wife is a six.com. Should be the next domain. If you found out Arnold Schwarzenegger likes to get pegged, would you lose respect for him? I think 100%. Yeah. yeah. I love Arnold, but I don't that, these, these are all like weird questions. Ask like some – or like put up some game <laughs> questions. Alex, have, have you ever pulled directly from strip club? If not, why haven't you? Tell I, us. I've never pulled from a strip club. Uh, I don't go to – I haven't been to a strip club since. Tell, tell the story of, of yeah. the first night we ever hang out, like in summary, for those that haven't heard it. Well, I, was, I wasn't there for the uh, – for the, for the, remember, I went home early that night from the strip club. I know. Uh, I mean, you want me to tell the full story? This is back when you used to drink, so I don't know. Parts of the story are kind of like – No, just like a summarize. Basically, Alex and I went to a strip club. Alex, there was like smoke in the air, and it was like a, kind of irritating him, and he left. And I ended up pulling a stripper and came back to his house with the stripper. No. Yeah. How did you find your way back to my house? And then you could hear us bang. I don't remember. I had your address, right? Yeah, but you were like wasted. <laughs> like, I don't know how. Also, I lived. I lived up on a hill, so I, I. You probably don't remember. I lived up on a hill, which is like really tricky. I remember. Get. Okay. Uh, okay. You said you used to run into Owen Cook at the grocery store, right? Uh, I ran into him not at the grocery store. I ran into him like uh, on the on the hiking path to. Uh, I lived like right on a hiking trail, so I, I used to see him on that hiking trail. I used to run into Julian at the. Uh, Julian went to the same gym as me and the same yoga studio. We were actually in the same yoga class for a period of time. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you told me that. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking weird. Yeah, he was always really nice. Okay, here's a question for you: Do the Tates have game? For me or for you? Who wants to go first here? No, nah, it doesn't matter. Um, to me, these are just a couple guys that are like fucking showmen on the internet. Okay, no different than Dan Bolzerian. So at first I was kind of drawn into the allure as well. Like, oh, these guys, you know, they, they're, they're parading around online like James Bond. Like they must be good with chicks. That date they, that Alex analyzed on his channel with Andrew Tate and the other girl – there was like newbie mistakes everywhere. Okay. The game was atrocious. It was just him posturing and positioning and, you know, trying to teach the girl lessons about, you know, misogynistic lessons, mind you, about the nature of women and so on and so forth. It was making countless errors. Okay. And Andrew claimed in my interview that he's at 450 late count in the interview on my channel, 70 of which are paid cam girls. Okay. And these girls that they, that he parades around is like, these are my, my regulars and this and that they're on his staff. They're paid cam girls. He is their boss. Yeah, that's not impressive. Not impressive that a rich guy can spend money on cars and planes and, and nice outfits. Okay, so I think I would wipe the floor with their game. My late count's higher than both of them combined, and they a Andrew says the game is stupid and game is like not a thing. So really, their game is just like throw money around and you know find you know who kn who knows how much it, it is like you know money driven, but I would assume most of it, but. Apparently Tristan's better with girls. I've never hung out with Tristan, but again, those Tristan went on our interview said he was just always good with girls. And so I would say Tristan's a natural and you know, they don't have any in-depth understanding of strategy. Again, I don't make, I don't know what's the big draw to these guys. Like I've I've taken a step back from like the inundation of all their content on the social media platforms. They're very charismatic. That's the big draw. I've taken a critical look at it. And it's really just a couple of guys showing off how much money they spend and trying to act cool. And it seems actually very pathetic once you look at like what it really is for what it really is. I think a lot of guys just get caught up in the allure, just like Dan Bilzerian. Again, Dan Bilzerian got all his money from a trust fund. 
That's Wait, not actually true, John. Like the, the trust fund thing, that's I've looked deep, deep, deep into that. Uh, there was not that much money in the trust fund. Like the trust fund was only matured for like, I don't know, like a million or five million. It wasn't a large amount compared to his net worth. So there was definitely, you can, you can I'll say- share, I'll share, I found some definitive stuff. It was like right at the time the trust became available that he suddenly had a bunch of money. Then he spent a bunch of the company's money. That's why he went into so much debt, the Ignite company. I'll send you a bunch of stuff, but, but either way, he wasn't good at poker and he didn't make as much that he didn't get, become that rich from poker. Um, but, you know, there's nothing impressive really about a guy that's able to go and like show off spending money. There's tons of rich people in the world, um, not to mention they're running basically a pyramid scheme with the, you know, Hustlers University where they encourage everyone that buys Hustlers University to go sell Hustlers University. And so I really have come to realize that those guys are, you know, they, they have no issue collaborating with scammers, endorsing scammers, known scammers, right? They're going on podcasts with Rolo and Fresh and Fit and all these other fuckheads. So I, I don't have any, any interest in collaborating or associating with those guys ever again, to be honest. What, what is your thoughts? Um, I would definitely collab with either one of the Tates. Uh, I'll, I think that, okay, here's my honest assessment. I think that they definitely put on a massive show. And I think that's because they want to be more polarizing, which you can't really blame them too much for that because it fucking works, right? Like their channel has grown really fast. And I don't think that's actually their personality to that extent. Like I think they heavily exaggerated. When I, It's like a totally different person. When I was when I had my live stream with Tristan uh, for two hours and you're having a combo with him for two hours, he's a totally different person than like when they're like making these like short clips where they're just trying to be very polarizing, right? It's, it's, it's not a completely false facade it is based on their personality it's just heavily exaggerated so that would be like if you take like my personality how for example i like to debate people and then every other word of my mouth is like uh like yo you want to debate bro you want to debate bro right i'm making a meme of myself but it's not a complete lie it's just a heavy exaggeration of my actual personality so i think they do that uh because they think that will grow their channel more and they're probably correct about do you that. think they have game i would need to see i would need to see infield like really legit infield for to make like yeah, a, I know that's what I'm saying. They have infield of like parading around the girls that are on their staff. Which again, I would need is not to see person. for me to say yes or no on that. I would need to either go out with them or see uh or see infield of them. However, I will say I can totally totally see them having game based on all the uh all the um signs they give off of like being confident uh i've seen them like even if you watch them on the fresh and fit podcast like you watch that like all the girls are like it's still a level of let me finish let me finish all the girls are trying to get away from iron and fresh right but you can see the girls gravitate towards them and there's like little things that make me think okay i can see these guys having game like there's one episode where like the selena is like whispering in his ear and he's like being like it, it, i can see these guys having game versus there's no way i could see um uh fresh and fit having games so well, I, I watched your whole video where you critiqued andrew's date and you yeah know. yeah yeah well yeah I made, I made objective criticism but i did say in that video that uh and a lot of people in the comments were saying this that that was again that was just a publicity stunt like he was doing that for that wasn't actually him running a date which kind of because he would have to be like pretty pretty dumb to to actually think that that lecturing a girl works so i just like, i think don't think he's yeah. like dumb. That's my thing. Well, I, th I think he has a megalomaniac uh, complex where he thinks he's the greatest. I think someone even said that he he said there's no downside to thinking you're the greatest man in all of history. But when you take your ego to that level, it becomes like very obnoxious to chicks. Like I, I've shown like a lot of his videos to hot chicks. And they're like, that guy seems like a huge fucking annoying, obnoxious, you know, asshole basically. Like not, like, not in a good way. Not like, oh, he's an asshole. I want to bang him. Just like that guy is like kind of just very off-putting. So, you know, again, you're like you can't Andrew. think you're the greatest guy in all of existence and tolerate like any level of anything from girls. Like he's like hyper reactive, hyper sensitive. Like I've heard behind the scenes that his girls have cheated on him. Okay, he would never admit that publicly. And this is again just what I've heard from multiple people. And that's why he's like hyper, like, oh, loyalty, my girls need to be my girls, all this stuff. It's like a, a sore spot for him. I, you know, in a way, in a lot of ways, it looks like he's fucking compensating, to be honest. It looks like he's he's got to, like, constantly put on the show. Yeah, it's, it's, so a, persona. it's, a, uh, it's a persona. Experience. It's definitely a persona that uh, they put on, especially Andrew. Uh, how much of the persona is really him and how much not? Uh, if I had to put a guess, I would say that it's, like, 
thirty percent him, seventy percent exaggeration. I definitely think there's elements of his personality in that persona. It's not like something he totally pulled out of his ass, but he does heavily exaggerate. Like there's just like I cannot imagine him being like that fucking like okay, if you like you watch some of his videos, he's talking about shit like fucking like if you are if you cook food, you are the biggest loser. You're an idiot. Like I can't actually imagine him in real life. Yeah, it's obnoxious. Every and every video he's talking about like, bro, you're a loser for cooking food. Uh like I just don't think he actually does that. Basically, he, basically uh, he but that's how they refer to everybody. They they call everybody normies and brokies and tell everybody how they're they're never gonna be as cool as him and all this stupid shit. I think it's a bad influence on a lot of guys. And it, and it's a lot of really heavy misogynistic stuff in their message about like putting women way below you and all this shit. Mm. All right. Let's uh move on to the next one. There's actually a very interesting question. Uh I can't find it, but let me I'll just read it back. I remember it was funny. Can you two honestly evaluate uh the biggest weak point in each other's game? Uh don't get butt hurt, please. Thank you. Something like that. The biggest weak point? Yeah, in each other. So like you would you would tell you would say mine and I would say yours. Okay. You haven't seen my game live for years, right? Like two, three, three years. Yeah, it's it's but the weak, the weak point I have in mind is not even gonna have anything to do with what I saw or not saw. Okay, what would you say for me? I'd say your biggest weak point is actually your obsession with uh with how much you want to get laid and that how it just like sucks your life up and like I think like you might even be better off if you like I uh, don't know like in some ways if you just like got married and you forgot about game. But I don't think you're ever going to be able to do that. So I would say that your biggest weak point is your obsession with game. Well, the past, to be fair, okay, take, uh, point taken. I was going a lot harder uh, back in the day. Like, it's not that I don't game hard anymore, but but I was going a lot harder. So like in the past couple of years, um, like as you guys know, I've been living with my girl in Brazil. We've got three dogs now. Um I, I have like a good rotation and I just bang the rotation a lot. Mm. That's why the count doesn't move up as much. It's at 1518 right now, 1518. Mm. But it was like slowing down for a bit. It's, it's sped up again in Sao Paulo because the, the lead volume is out of control. But in Florianopolis, it was starting to slow down a bit. But we I've been focusing very heavily on my business. Like we have a, a firm mm. commitment to, to rise to the top of the space by the end of next year. And, we're, and there's tons of stuff in the works. We're hiring lots of people. And so I'm very I'm I'm devoting a ton of my time towards building my business these days oh. and working. So, and and we do we have a bunch of hobbies and, and different other shit we do. So so it's not all like the year that I did 246 new from mid 2017 to mid 2018, 246 new full closes. I was doing nothing else. It was like I didn't have any job I had to go to. I, I was either uh, swiping Tinder, texting on a date with a rotation girl, or at the club or at the strip club. And I would, um, I would only take breaks from those activities to eat, do Muay Thai, and go to the gym. And that was it. So, like, you know, there's diminishing returns. That uh, that was just, you know, and, and all the leads were getting worked to the bone and all that stuff. But, oh, like, um, these days, a lot of lead, I let a lot of leads, like, fall off. Like, if the girl's, like, I really only do dates to the house anymore lately like the past bunch of months so any girl that's like refusing to come straight to the house on the first date i just don't meet her so that saves time and you know there's a bunch of adjustments i've made um just to like save time and not have it take over my life but when we were hanging out more in person it, it was more towards that direction that you're mentioning uh, uh -huh. what would you say Marcus? um I, I kind of know what you're gonna say but go ahead cold approach uh, well, yeah, I'm, I was going to go more a more specific one, but you've told me privately. What? Uh, you think some of the stuff I do is too gamey. Oh, uh, a little bit. Not That's not that bad, though. I why well, I, I just think, I mean, back, at least back when we were hanging out, like like when we met in L.A. and stuff like that, you weren't doing, I think you've done Cold Approach a lot more since. Right? Uh, I hit my peak when it comes to cold approach in like 2015 or something. I was doing like pretty much all cold approach, very little online. And then the transition started to happen when I got like uh, my solar job and I started working more hours. And then it just like the scale started tipping towards more online. When you when I met you in L.A., it was 2017, I believe. Uh, by that point, I was doing cold approach from time to time, but not often. But I had already – no, I didn't – like, yeah, I definitely banged a lot of girls from Cold Approach since 2017. But I wouldn't say, like, I started doing more of it. If anything, it was less. 
Okay. Yeah, I think it, one thing that sucks is the fucking stupid Lyme disease gets in the way of you being able to <laughs> and your online game bans. But that's not your neither one of those is in you know too much in your control. Yeah, the the, the bans. Uh, yeah. Well, you can make the argument it's my fault because I made a bunch of videos where like I showed screenshots from Tinder, but uh, uh, they they like manual facial recognition. Yeah, I think what happens is my theory is that when I like log into a dating app, because like the girls in my area already know my photos, they just report me right away. So I like if I lived in a different, if I moved to a different city, I might be okay. But I'm also I just got a whole bunch of new photos, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, we were just looking at the, me and my chick. We were looking at those. Yeah, I thought those came out pretty well. Your WhatsApp picture is really nice too. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. The guy did a really good job. He did a really good job. Um, do you have anything else to add to that? Um, I don't think so. You can roast me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me what sucks about my game. I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, it was just the cold. I remember we went out and did cold approach. You were like, you didn't even want to be that. You like didn't like it that much, and you weren't sure. Like, oh yeah, yeah. For me, for me, it depends on just my mood. Like some days, I am actually very much into doing cold approach, and I'm like all about it. And some days, I'm just like I have no enthusiasm or no desire to do it. It just heavily depends on my mood that day. Hmm. But I have countered a popular belief. I have hooked up with well over 100 girls from Cold Approach. Uh, nice. I, I, three out of five of my girlfriends I met at a bar. Three. Yeah, three out of five girlfriends that I've had I met at a bar. So it's not like every single girl I meet comes from a dating app. Uh, okay. Let's get everyone to like the video for you guys that are that are on right now. How many people we got? We got uh, 240. 250. 250. Yeah, make sure you guys take the two seconds to like the video. And I'll just shout out the thing I said in the beginning again really quick. We're running a two-day virtual boot camp uh, Friday and Saturday. It's 27 bucks. It's me training you live virtually on my full cold approach system for a $97 upgrade with VIP. You get access to a Telegram group to get feedback while you're out doing the approaches on the Friday and Saturday. Full details in the link in the description. Yeah, um, yeah that's people. What? What's that? I was going to say, guys, please don't spam the chat. Like, if you have a question, that's fine. You can ask it every, like, 10 minutes. But don't, like, keep typing the same question 100 times because if I'm not picking your question, it's because I think it's a bad question. So, uh, yeah, don't, like, spam Here, the so chat. I, ha I have a question I want to read from the chat. Okay, go ahead. I'm just curious of your response to this. So someone said, under your rules of debate, I don't even know what your rules of debate are. <laughs> uh, cool. But if someone calls another person a fraud, isn't the burden of proof on the accuser? I guess it applies with Kevin calling me a fraud with no proof. Uh, the burden of proof would definitely, in a debate, yes, the, porn, the the burden of proof would definitely be on the accuser. So for sure, 100%, yeah. So, so you have to provide any, any evidence. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you call someone a fraud, uh, yeah, you have to provide the proof. You can't be like, well, prove to me you're not a fraud. <laughs> I have, but in, in, you know, excess. All right. Yeah, uh, you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, that's that's why. That's why it's, it's so funny to, to me. It's like, that's it'd, it'd be one thing if I didn't have infielder receipts or like no testimonial, like pretty much every other coach in the space. And it's like it's obviously he's just buttered because if he's to place me below fresh and fit, who are like have been exposed for like a million reasons for scamming and faking stuff, and then he has zero evidence, but he's going to put me as a bigger fraud than them just because I and Coach White Pills there right alongside me. I do think though, like. One thing I will say, in which case I think you're limited in terms of the proof, is that a lot of your best infield is in your product, and like for anyone, so for anyone who has your product, we're, we're releasing we're releasing full infields weekly now. Oh, you are. Yeah, you yeah. should you should definitely do that because yeah, for anyone who like think about it, if anyone who doesn't have your product, like they can't see it, right? So it's like, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that was the reason for not putting out a lot of infield was uh, for a bit. And I, I had a lot in the older days. I, I privated a lot of it. Squat and Casanova's channel got deleted over infield. Braddock's channel, Street Attraction. Um, there's a whole bunch. Yeah. Tom Torero. Yeah. Um, it goes on and on. So, like, but a lot of these guys. Yeah, Tom Torero was, was doing some. He had videos of him, like, banging the chicks and shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I understand. I mean, you know, that's, that's fucked up to do. But, like, guy, it's frustrating that. Like in sports or anything else, you can like show footage of the result, right? And we can show, I can show footage of all the polls and stuff like that. But like people are like, well, we, you know, we didn't see you bang the girl. It's like, I can never show you that, dumbass. I can give you the next best thing. I give you the next best thing, right? Like, 
but it is uh, it is a bit frustrating. Um, but the other reason is we don't want to give too much away. Like when I break down an infield pull from start to finish, I'm giving away like my full method. You could just show the infield without breaking it down. That's a, yeah, that's, that's true. Like a, or just really yeah, just important parts. As well, yeah, maybe. Well, no, I think I think you should show the whole thing, but you can be like, yo, if you want to see the breakdown, then get the product. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to dissuade people from buying. I mean, you have a lot of infield. You don't have to show like all of it, but show a lot of it. Because then, then people don't have to take your word for it, right? Like about the... Uh, I was Yeah, I was thinking about um, showing like just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of interactions um, like on a page that with just like the audio bleeped or something like that so that people can see like and show like show me taking the girls home like or show me getting makeouts like show show stuff happening that they can see with success without giving away the whole strategy of what i was doing i don't know man like i think like people who are gonna like buy your product like they're gonna buy your product either way because they want to see like the breakdowns and they want to see like the detailed explanations and they want to like have contact with you like i don't think they're going to be dissuaded by just like seeing a little bit of your infields for free online i think if anything it'll help your sales i don't think it'll hurt your sales in any way uh yeah, like I, I can say like, well, I guess we don't have like a basis of comparison, but I've showed like so many of my texting interactions, like from opener to close. And I don't think it's like hurt my sales in any way. Um, okay. There was one question earlier that I wanted to see. Uh, where is it? There's one question that I remember I was good. Uh, can't find it now. Too much spam. Okay. No. Do you remember Justin Wayne? How he got gay girls? I've never, I've never actually met Justin Wayne. Have you ever met him? Not in person, but I think you were part of a. Uh, you and I have been part of a bunch of groups where, where a lot of these guys were in. I was part of a. Um, he was trying to claim five hundred lays from day game, and I called bullshit. And it turns out it was bullshit. But he he was like really trying to say that it was true, and. Um, I, I made like some comment like fucking making fun of him and he like basically said he would have someone kill me in Ukraine because I was living in Ukraine at the time. He's like, oh, I know a couple I remember. Of people that'll blow you out of this world for a couple bucks. And he like said that to me on Facebook and I, I screenshotted it. But what I, what I thought was beautiful uh, kind of payback to that motherfucker was when he went on, was it Vice? Vice, yeah. Vice had him mic'd up for those of you that didn't see He's it. such a dumbass for- You for want to show that clip? I think everyone's seen it. I know exactly what clip. I think he was, he was mic'd up. He's and he had this fucking uh, European blonde chick or whatever. Why would he and, and like they're like, "Do you love Justin?" And she's like, "Uh, yeah." And like, it was very <laughs> clear the girl was just like trying to like give scripted it answers. Was, it, was, it was so bizarre. It was the weirdest. But, but they took a break. This was the beautiful part. I, I thought this was so amazing. They took a break, and he forgot he was still mic'd up. And he was like, if you don't act like this, I'm not going to pay you. How do you forget your mic top when you're filming with Vice? Oh my yeah, God. but he literally said, <laughs> like, you if, you, if, you forget, if you forget to do this, I'm not going to pay you. And then they afterwards, they're like, did you threaten her? And he's like, and he basically, he was like threatening the girl too. He's like, you always yeah. got to remember, I've got more guns than you. Like, you got to keep in line all this shit. And they're like, did you threaten her? And he's like, uh, uh, can I get some water? And then, like, <laughs> and then they're like, did you say that you wouldn't pay her if whatever? And he's like, uh, he's, he's like, you know, I thought this was going to be about game and stuff like that. He's like, I don't want to do this. And then he like deleted all his content. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah, he, he, I was he, like, yes. It's like like another victory like that happened recently. Casey Zander came on and he goes, I'm gonna go, I, don't, I don't care about dating at all. He goes, I got in this to make money. He's like, I care about business. He's like, all I cared about was converting leads into customers. And I was just sitting behind the screen like, fuck, thank God. Right. But some of his like loyal fans would be like, thanks, Uncle C. Like, we respect you for that. Where, where can we learn more now? Right? Yeah, the Uncle like C thing is a little cringe for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was funny. I, I, I'm, I'm so surprised. That, dude, that dude's like a 20, he was like a 23 year old giving marriage counseling. <laughs> you, you think if you're like filming with Vice, you're going to be like extra careful about everything you say, or at least I certainly would be. But like, like, uh, how do you not realize the idea of a hot mic? Like it's that's that's a, that's been a thing for like fifty years. Like you know, you just say someone, like, people, 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 about... lost, people lost their careers over like saying things that they didn't think the mic was live. Uh, so people keep asking, "Will you fight Andrew or Tristan?" Or at least I guess it's one person. Yeah, I saw someone posted that a hundred times. Um, so I have. 
so I have pretty extensive martial arts training. I've been doing Muay Thai since 2016. Uh, I've trained in Brazil a bunch, uh, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at some Gracie schools. I trained Krav Maga under a ex-Special Forces guy in, in Poland, and I've done some Ashita Karate. That being said, I do not think I'm on the level that they are with fighting. I don't think those guys are on the level of like a UFC fighter or an MMA. Like Tristan had one MMA bout and, and he lost and like very quickly, right? So the, the championship that they do have, Krauser made a whole article about this. If you guys look up Krauser about Tate, um, he basically showed that they won like some like low level. But Krauser does a lot. They, he, they he call like, themselves world champions. No, he showed there. He showed. Yeah, he does. Like he, he, yeah. But like he showed their, um, like what the league was about and like who they faced and like this and that. And it's like, it's not as big of a deal as they make it out to be. That being said, they are professional fighters. I'm not. And they train all the time and they've been training a lot longer than me. So I, for sure, they would be able to beat me in a fight. Like they'd be able to beat pretty much everyone on the stream in a fight. So they wouldn't be able to be like an argument. I would win in a fight. But again, they're professional fighters, right? Like this, that's like their thing. Yeah, I would, I would not want to fight those guys. This is actually a good question. John, you endorse Braticus for lots of proof despite burning down a city for game. The only real critique you have of Austin is burning down a city. If you showed lots of proof, would you respect that? That's not the only critique I have of Austin. What are, what are your what can you can you go over that again? What are your critiques of Austin besides the uh, the burning? I know program? I know guys that have taken Austin's programs, and I know just people from the Toronto scene. And you know, this is going to get a little personal here. I know guys that hang around him and stuff, and he just kind of, from what I've heard from lots of people, is he just carries himself like a punk. They were, like they reported in the article in Columbia, even objectively that the, that that he was like encouraging the student. Uh, they're just they're it's just. It's a lot of like, like he's very much immature and like still very much a young kid. And like, you know, like, like blowouts, they, they'd be like berating the girls. And, I, and like, you know, I, I heard a lot of fucked up shit through various circles of people that have been associated with him about him doing fucked up shit. Something I can't say on YouTube. So I don't, um, I don't know goes, who these people are, but I've gone out. It with goes them. much. It I've goes much deeper. multiple times. He's fucking good, man. Like you wouldn't expect him to be good because he has a baby face, but that guy is a fucking like champ. Like I think if you went out with him, you you would change your mind for sure. Like again, fucking- yeah, the stuff I've the stuff I've heard from lots of people about different fucked up shit he's done and the way he carries himself, he he strikes me as as just like a big punk. So I've never liked the kid. It's not just about the fact that he blew up Columbia and got kicked out. Would you go out with him if you guys were in the same city? No. What What if uh, he released a bunch of in- – well, actually, he has some infield. But what if he released like a shitload of infield? Would you go through it? Why? I don't know because I feel like you're kind of like stuck. Like you're kind of like – you formed an opinion and you're like not willing to reconsider if given other evidence. Because I've heard a ton of shit. Like, I, like there's a lot of guys, without fucking blowing up people's names on the stream, there was a lot of guys that would, would hung out with them, that hung out with them a lot. And they told me tons of stuff and tons of stories. And I've heard the same from lots of other people. So I can I can tell you offline. I don't want to throw people under the bus and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you don't have to mention any names. But I'm telling you, dude, I've gotten out with the guy. Like he, People him. say John hates everyone. That's not true at all. There's tons of guys I respect in the game that don't have channels. Right? You guys think the whole fucking community is just those that have channels. But the reality is 99% of the guys that have channels are not good at game. They suck shit at game. You know, A lot of them are mediocre at best. You look at who they're dating behind the scenes, almost always average or below average looking. Okay, And the guys that I do respect in game, I don't talk about on the stream. One of them is coming on my channel tomorrow, actually, my original business partner. Um, guys that coach on my team are between like the 500 and 700 lay count range that carry themselves a million times better than these guys on YouTube that destroy the results. What was the you skill know, level of your, uh, of your, cause I actually saw some infield of him when I was going through your product. It, he's the Josh. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you, here's the skill level. And this was in 2014 when we did a lot of our filming is through, we filmed for almost a year for five nights a week. And I, um, I lost it. I was working at Sony. My, my me assessment, be, let me, let me just get my, let me, let me just say, All right, go ahead. Let me just say the statistics. So like, Wow. Out of that whole filming project, we had like a multi-person camera camera team and all this stuff. We kept the number of pulls higher than the number of nights out, which means that on a given night, either he would pull or I would pull, but we would both pull more often than neither of us would pull. 
if that makes any sense. And we were very proud of that. And that was eight years ago. But who was doing most of the heavy lifting? That would be the question. I would say he was close to my skill level at that really? point. I, I've taken a lot further since. But, yeah, I, he was at – like 250 and I, uh, I was at 300 late count in May 2014. He was at like 250 and we came up with a lot of the cold approach method together originally. And I, I just took it a lot further. He ended up getting married in 2015. He married this, this like girl. He was basically, they were like doing a lot of drugs together and like going to orgies and like all this shit. And like, he like, you know, burnt out from that life and then came back to reality. So, um, but yeah, he's very good. Okay. And that's why I started the company with him. I was I was trying to find like one of the best guys at that time. And he came out to hang out with me in the Vegas pickup mansion and we and we like connected and had a lot of fun together. And um actually can I show a picture of him and I from the pickup mansion? Yeah, as long as there's no nudity, yeah. <laughs> uh here it is. Let's see. Um cause I just found this the other day because we're making a thumbnail for uh when he comes on the chat tomorrow. Um let me just pull this up here. This is this is pretty awesome. This picture is like one of my favorite pictures. We okay. Um, close WhatsApp. Make sure I close this shit. All right. Did you give me sharing privileges? Uh, yeah. How do I do that? I don't know. I think I, you know, I think you can just do it. You can just go under share at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's sharing now. There you go. Uh, all right. You guys see this? Uh, no, you haven't had it here. There we go. Can you see? Yeah. So this is Josh on the left. This is me on the right with a shirt that says filth and these Playboy uh, flannel pajama pants. This is in Las Vegas in 2013. I was renting a, a full scale mansion. <clears throat> I had multiple students uh, living in the house and we would train them. And he was living in San Diego, he would come to visit me in Vegas and stay at the mansion for some periods of time. And then I ended up moving to San Diego after Vegas, at the beginning of 2014. And, and then we started filming a whole lot of infield together. Um, but he's gonna, he's like super jacked now. He's gonna come on tomorrow. Just the way he carries himself, you guys will be able to see like worlds apart from, it's not that I hate everyone on YouTube, it's just most of the people on YouTube are fucking corny. Like li literally Alex is the only guy I endorse on YouTube because you, you have some guys that are like, you know, they basically think they're like huge hot shots because they just hit 100 lay count. I did that in June 2012, over a decade ago now, over a decade as of this month. Um, and, and for those of you that think there isn't much to get better or learn past 100, you're completely wrong. There's key things that I learned at 1,000 lay count that I had no idea about at 100. So this goes, you can take the game to a lot deeper levels. So these guys that I respect in the game that are between like 500, 700 lay count um, would run circles around any of these guys on YouTube any day of the week. What uh? Let's answer this question. What are your thoughts on Saint the Sinner? I've heard of this person. I don't know anything about them, but I'm curious. If you um, I don't know much about him either, to be honest. People have emailed me a bunch of shit about him, but I haven't. Off the top of my head, I don't. I'm not familiar. Mm, okay. Someone keeps asking if like about your male escort. John was never a male escort, to the best of my ability. You were never a male escort, right? No. This one person keeps <laughs> asking like, John, as a male escort, would you say that this blah 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 blah? And he like keeps spamming guys. No spamming. I've never been on last court. Steve the Steve the Dean said he was a gigolo and he was talking about that a bunch when he was on my on my stream, but I've never I've never done that. Uh okay. There is a few more questions. Oh, here's an interesting one. Um so you know, I'm not gonna talk bad about Sonny. Uh we were pretty close friends. He was my best friend, probably at one point in like 2017 and yeah, like low key work together right back in the day yeah we were running boot camps together his game is extremely good um his fitness knowledge is extremely good his internal mindset stuff is extremely good and he's a, he's generally a good guy cool guy and we and we were pretty close friends a lot of people don't know this he didn't want me to say this uh publicly for many years i don't think it matters at this point but i met him at an rst boot camp yeah. <laughs> yeah i met him in an rst boot camp um in 2012 and he was at 60 lay count but he's younger than me he was at 60 lay count i was at 103 lay count and then we we we, we were close friends and we, and we stayed in touch you know up until about 
20 and we lived in the same city together in 2017 in North Carolina, the year that I did 246, he was my main wing and we were hanging out a lot and we were hitting, we were doing Muay Thai in the gym together all the time, almost every day. And what really happened with the, um, with the falling out that we had is he started going hardcore black pill and which is ridiculous because he knows so much. I taught him a lot of stuff too about strategy and tactics, but he knows the game is very heavily strategy. But he got so obsessed with the looks maxing stuff that he started a looks max group and he was it was just promoting toxicity and and there was all these guys that were in the group rating each other's jaw lines rating each other's face symmetry uh saying you're a loser you're not a chad and i came into the group and said i think this is fucking bullshit and unproductive and you guys shouldn't be doing this and shame I agree on you all out. for leading this and sunny was like you're jealous that now i'm getting some popularity because i had the big pickup channel not big, but bigger than, than his channel. And he was like, he was like, you're jealous and this and that. And, and admittedly, uh, my alcoholism was like at its worst at this time as well. I, um, I was like fucking in very rough shape in Poland. This was like right after I got back from Europe. You were still in Europe. Yeah, I remember that period. Yeah, I was in Poland and in Warsaw. Is like That was like when it started to get like potentially life-threatening because I was, you know, going into full blackouts like, getting into dangerous situations and stuff like that. And um, there was 24 hour liquor stores. So I was going on these like multi, you know, very hardcore benders where I was drinking around the clock for days on end and all this stuff. And I said some things to him in, in some of those, you know, drunken moments that were probably inappropriate. And then he said some stuff back that was inappropriate. And then we just cut ties. Um, but I'm not going to speak bad about the guy. Um, his game was very solid. His fitness advice was very solid. And his mindset is very solid. I miss him sometimes, miss, miss being friends with him. Um, do, you think, do you think you would ever be friends with him again? Yeah. I've thought about reaching out, um, you know, because I, I, I haven't drank in like three years. And he, he would always tell me all the time. He's like, you're by far the smartest guy I've ever met. He's like, if you applied yourself just a little bit. He was a really good influence on me. He was, he was like – you need more discipline. You need to apply yourself more. You'd be able to accomplish so much shit. He's like, I'm not kidding, dude. He's like, I, and this doesn't, I don't mean this lightly. He's like, you have a fuck ton of potential. And he was, you know, he was very supportive. He was in some of those drinking vendors and stuff like that. I, th I think he might've contacted my parents at one point and it was like, you know, you need to check in on him. So he was, um, <laughs> Kevin Gay Wider just asked thoughts on raping a dead baby corpse. I, it's, it amazes me you don't have moderation in these chairs. <laughs> no, it's not like a free for all. So, what, um, so you think you're yeah? I've, I've seen plenty of slander about me in the chat so far. Um, but you know, like he he's one of those like old school guys that that um, you know, he was all he wrote some books about like how men are becoming more feminine and more soft, and oh, that men need to return to their roots and 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 work with their hands and like you know, get a, a solid workout regimen so that it filters the discipline into the rest of their life. And, you know, so he had a lot of really good stuff to say. Um, he kind of fell off the internet after a lot of that shit went down. And the last I heard, he was dating a girl for like some 20 year old, which is funny because he would always bust on me for banging like 18 to 23 year old chicks. He's like, they're not even mature enough yet. And this, but he got pretty serious with some 20 year old girl that I'm, I'm pretty sure he met on a Toronto boot camp that we ran together like three, four years ago. And his goal was his end go game was always to get a family and this and that. So I, I don't I haven't kept tabs like a lot of my mutual friends. He stopped being friends with them, too, uh, over the years. And he's kind of like gone his own way. So I don't know what what has happened to him. But I assume he's he's looking to start a family. Uh, that was always his goal. Um, you should reach out to him. I'll yeah. Like, I'll, I'll like he's, yeah, he's a yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, I like, I, I like Sonny. Okay, John, is there someone you don't personally like that you can admit has a good game? That's an interesting question. I'm curious what your answer on that is. Um, again, people are people only know, like the only world you're exposed to is on YouTube and social media. And there are guys with good game that are around that are just not in the limelight. Um, I'm trying to think of who I don't like. Oh, there, there was this dude. I think you might actually know him. Do you know that Polish dude, Luke? Oh, no, not personally. No, I don't know. He's in a bunch of different circles, my friend. So basically, he was my main wing. And him and this dude, Rob, were my main wings in Philly. 
and he was a doctor and his whole move is that he would like set dates to this island so he'd be like oh i have an idea we should take my jet ski to this island and have a picnic lunch but it was all premeditated and he would do this like multiple times a week and then he would fuck the girls in the ass and that was like his whole thing is like pretending it was like this spontaneous idea to go have a lunch on the island and then he would fuck them in the ass and then he would like brag to all of us like oh I've, you know this girl fell for this girl fell. so that was like his thing but he would he would try to like openly game girls that i'd already number closed or like girls that i'd made out with or like he hit on a couple of my rotation girls i gave him like two firm warnings and cut him off as a friend and then he started doing it to like other friends in our circle and stuff like that and so i thought he was just a piece of shit, but he his game was fairly decent um so you know like basically like there there's guys in the game that 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 are good but are also like an asshole and just shitty people um i would put <laughs> definitely the ump guys in that category i think they have a good game yeah exactly those guys like those guys have some kind of fucking mental complex surrounding aid mogging right aid mogging is like a tiny little part of the game right like it's not going to happen very often where a guy comes in on your set and it's not very often where a guy in her group is going to try to interfere in, in a very like confrontational way so it's like a very tiny piece of the game ump makes it like the crown jewel be all end all like you have street cred if you know how to amog and they spend their time concerning themselves with who's amog to and like you know all this dumb shit and i think that's absolutely retarded i assume you agree yeah i do um okay let's take maybe like one or two more questions uh let's see what else we have do you uh, no actually never mind this question is kind of boring uh Actually, fine. Whatever. Let's answer this. What do you think about Elliot Hulse and he's teaching how to get the perfect life? Um, I prefer to uh, skip that question for reasons. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's uh, so you guys gonna jerk me off? Okay, let's, you can answer this question. I said super chat before asking if not drink alcohol will come to your detriment in a night game environment. Um, for me, it is, it is a detriment. Like, to be honest, I've been like somewhat toying with the idea of, of resuming drinking again in a controlled way. Although I think that would be a terrible <laughs> That's idea. the worst idea ever. But, but for me, it, it, cause I have social anxiety, I have general anxiety, I have obsession, obsessive compulsive disorder, and I still use something called phenobut when I do go out and do night game, which is a similar mecha mechanism of action to alcohol, but not quite. Um, but it is like a more controlled type thing. But my game is for sure stronger when I have like three drinks. Why don't you, um, just, so do, why don't you just do more kava? Yeah, that's an that's also an option. I basically take Phenobut every time I go to a night game, and that and that's like good enough. Plus, I don't get like too sloppy like I used to with how, drinking. How do you go out for night game? Uh, these days only a couple times a week, usually just on the weekend or, or like one weekday and one weekend day. But yeah, and the reason you, for that you is you do not want to do I, fat I, more than two or three days a week. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't take it more than twice a week, but like, um, cause it can become addicting. There's tolerances and it's not, um, but like, um, yeah, I mean, like I have the I, I live with my chick now. We've got the dogs and I've got a stacked up rotation. Like Brazil is fucking amazing. Like most of the girls in rotation are stunner level. And it's like just awesome just plowing the rotation. Like sometimes I'll, I'll bang like two or three rotation girls in a day. Um, but like I said, I'm working a lot, a, a lot, lot more, more than I ever have because um, we're really trying hard to take over the industry. So um, and, you know, I'll put this out there. We're uniting the most legit guys in the manosphere together and under kind of like a super brand, right? So we formally partnered recently with Jay Vincent, who, who, who basically I see as my equivalent in the fitness space. Uh, we've been talking to Bulldog Mindset about him teaching business and finance stuff as well as some mindset stuff to our clients. And, you know, we, Alex, you and I have had talks, but we, you know, we'd like you to be part of that on some level as well. And the whole idea is that there would be like a one-stop shop of the most legit guys in the space that have efficient, effective, optimized systems that are data driven and that are very straightforward. There's no woo woo theoretical BS. And we're being very selective with that. There aren't many like super legit guys that, that are, have fully optimized 
uh, their respective crafts. But the overarching, and we've, we've, we've actually partnered with a fitness, or sorry, a fashion brand, uh, fashion and style brand as well now, and with a photography brand. And so we're looking to be the one-stop shop for total man optimization, health, fitness, dating, fashion style, mindset, confidence, et cetera, in a way that's extremely, extremely, extremely over-delivering on value and being straightforward and, and practical and optimized. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and, you know, leading into that, we have this uh, this challenge come up this weekend. Make sure you guys check in the description if you haven't. It's a two-day virtual boot camp for 27 bucks. Okay, there's, there's no catch. We're just trying to blow people away with value so they want to learn the whole system. But, um, yeah, I mean, regarding the alcohol, I, even though I was an alcoholic and I stopped drinking, I've been almost three – in September, it'll be three years sober. I still encourage my students, if they're having severe, severe approach anxiety – or they're like hyper analytical like me or, or very shy to have a couple if you can drink in a controlled way where you're not abusing it i think it can be beneficial uh someone asked my religion i'm atheist i, I think kava is so much better you get all the pros of alcohol without any of the cons if you're not all the pro, not all the pros of alcohol pretty much yeah man honestly if you get the dose I, feel, I feel like the best way to describe kava is it's a cross between like alcohol weed and ecstasy uh, maybe it hits you differently than me. For me, it's very similar to alcohol, but there's like no downside. Uh, so what it, it works on the same receptors. They both work on the GABA receptor. And Fendi, this is the real Fendi, dude. The real Kava. All work on the GABA receptors. Yeah. This is this is from the realkava.com website. Uh, yeah, that's just a brand of Kava. That's a good one, but yeah. And and are you having to like because it doesn't last that long, right? How long does it last? It doesn't period? last long. That's the only downside. You have to like constantly just like just drink, sip on it. So how do you how do you do that at the club? I just bring, bring pills. I just, I just bring a water bottle and put it in my pocket. Um, okay. Because yeah, because with Phenobut, uh, it lasts like four to six hours. Yes. It, it takes water. like two hours to hit. So I'll, I'll I'll take like one and a half to two grams of Phenobut uh, two hours before going out, and then it covers me for the night. Yeah, Fenny Beat lasts a lot longer, but Fenny Beat is also more way more addictive. Kava is more way more natural. Yeah, I only I, only, I usually only take like once a week, if if that. Yeah, there's some pretty gnarly stories of people who had like developed any beauty addictions, but I've never heard of a kava addiction in my whole life. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of bad press on kava. You know, just a quick side note um, about it causing yeah. liver problems, yeah, but that's from a specific part of the plant. Like that's from like the root or something, and like what's in most drinks is not the root, or vice versa. It's it's something like that. But there, there's yeah. a lot of negative press about it causing liver problems. But uh, I, I took to kava for a whole year, like back in 2010 or something like that. Cause I quit alcohol for a year and took Kava for the full year. And it's, I feel like Kava is more of like a chill drug though, because hmm. it like makes, it enhances music it enhances like sensual touch. So I'd usually just like lay with a girl and we would just be like Kava'd out on the couch. That, it doesn't maybe hit you differently. Have you tried real Kava.com? Yeah. I, yeah. I ordered that. We were taking that. The problem was we like went through it too quickly because we had, that was when the three girls were living in the house and we were like all having multiple drinks for the night. And it like, we burned through it in like a week or something. I look like different substances uh, hit people differently. Yeah. For me, it's not like uh, for me, it's more of like an upbeat type of thing. It gives me energy. Uh, makes me like motivated. So yeah. you drink, you drink it daily. Yeah. I've been drinking Kava daily for years. I do blood work fairly often. I've never had any kind of liver problems. Interesting. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to experiment with that more. I'll, I'll do an experiment. This week. We're actually going out tonight with this new threesome girl. It's like a nine five that we closed during the week. And she's like, I really want to go out to the clubs. So we're going to go out with her and probably still pick up other girls because they're both by I me. Mean, that girl and my chick. Yeah, you're definitely That's cool. if you bring out girls, you're already fucking and then you strike out or you don't get to pull. Then you still have a threesome anyways. Force them. Yeah, you're definitely doing it wrong. The pills don't really do shit. You need the powder. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Let's take like one last question. I can go. I gotta go. Come in like twenty minutes. I don't. I don't. I don't know. You had something to do there, right? Yeah, I gotta. I gotta bounce too. I, mean, I think that's basically it. Do uh, you have any closing thoughts? I I want to hear like because because to me this is like fucking uh, you know even though Kevin's not as popular as, as modern life dating was, this is like kind of like going through the same nonsense as I did last year. Very frustrating 
uh, from my end to have someone call me a fraud and scammer when I like respect the game a fuck ton and would never scam or be a fraud about any little piece of the game whatsoever. Right. It's really just a, a behind the scenes beef that you guys are witnessing where he's just going to be like, well, he's a poopy head and put me on F rank below fresh and fit. Okay. Because I brought on his old business partner who he has beef with. So now I'm like part of the beef and getting drawn into the fucking drama. Okay. But notice how he provides zero evidence for any of the fraud and scammer claims. Okay. It's just a term he... He thinks he's a mute. That's the problem here, which he's kind of confused uh, legally on what he's allowed to do. He thinks that throwing around the term constantly a fraud and scammer is okay because it's technically his opinion and not a false statement of fact. But I've already spoken to multiple lawyers about this. And if it's causing damages to your business, which it already is because people are thinking, oh, he must not be legit because some dumbass that comes on Alex's channel says that, um, then, you know, then, then he's gotten himself into some real potentially serious shit. And if he's going to call me, on the spectrum and say i'm using steroids and saying i'm padding my lay count with trannies and all this stuff okay a whole bunch of false statements then he's gonna have a big problem okay and he thinks since he's broke there's no issue someone spamming i uh, read my super chat i don't know which i don't think it was anything good wait so you said you're curious about something then you kind of went on this like monologue so what, what are you curious about oh i'm curious about like people's uh you know again i've i've put I've, I've put out endless amounts of proof for those that aren't aware. I have a video that's over an hour long that shows all the proof I have. This was, I, I did this when I hit a thousand count because a lot of people were very skeptical because the number is getting very high now. I know the number exactly. I mean, Alex can, can attest to this, that he's been part of groups for years where I posted every close and you, <laughs> you said it was like annoying, but I was, and it wasn't to, to prove I'm actually getting laid. I think, you know, part of me likes to show off and brag and stuff like that. And some of that might be related to, uh, some of the childhood verbal abuse I went through, you know, like I thrive on external validation for better or worse. I'll admit that. Um, and I am, I am maturing on some levels where I'm not, where it's not about all about showing off and stuff like that. Um, but it also is important to show people like that is, this is real what's happening here. Like the first night you went out with me, I brought a strip home and then we banged like six more girls. <laughs> that was a fun weekend. Um, uh, it was quite a few girls. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, it, it, I've proven time and time and time again, more so than anyone in the industry of all the proof that I have. And we have, we even have a proof page now with just literally hundreds of testimonials that, that's in the description of any of the videos on my channel. So for someone to say that, that I'm a fraud, they'd have to say that hundreds of hours of infield was all paid actors, that hundreds of testimonials was all paid actors, that all these thousands of pictures with girls are all, a lot of them are in hookup situations and guys will try to make the claim his whole lake on is hookers. And that just came from uh, basically just misinformation of people seeing a girl that I banged being on seeking arrangement and then assuming that I must have paid her because she's on a sugar daddy site. But there's a whole separate system for sugar daddy game, just like there is for a stripper game. You've talked about that on your channel as well. We both got the cease and desist from seeking arrangement for teaching sugar daddy game. So, you know, it, it is just frustrating when you have your life's work on display and some nobody basically with no relevance or qualifications comes in and is just going to call me a fraud over some like dramatic beef, you know? So, but whatever, it'll be dealt with. Mm. Would there be any, any set of circumstances that would get Debating you- Debating Kevin? Yeah. No. Like You don't understand, you don't understand, like knowing what I know about Kevin, to me, he's a cross between Modern Life Dating and my ex-coach Ryan, okay? Massive piece of shit on many levels. And I think you might wake up to this at some point, uh, what's really going on behind the scenes about Kevin. I think he's a snake. I think he thrives off manipulating people and reframing things so that everyone kind of thinks Kevin's this great guy and this and that. And that's exactly what he wants. He wants to go and downplay the true stuff about him and reframe it so people think he's a great guy. And he wants to try to throw more shade on me and all that stuff. I don't want to platform a guy like that. I have no interest in debating a guy like that. He's already speaking slander and speaking out of his ass. There's no reason for me to engage in a debate with a guy like that. Okay. He's just going to try to. Would you do an MMA match with him? Would you fight him? Um, does he have fighting training? Um, I think a little bit. I think he said he has some boxing experience, but you guys are actually fairly well lined up. You're, you're two inches taller. Uh, you probably weigh a little bit more than him, but it's not a massive discrepancy. Would it be MMA or boxing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If it was uh, MMA, I would. If it was MMA, I do. I, I trained boxing last year, but only for like six months. 
I'm not going to go do like a fucking fight camp, a training camp or something to fight some fucking loser living in his parents' house. What would, would you do? Would you do an MMA? Probably, depending on the the terms and all that. Oh, juicy! I've I've been I I I've, I've fucking trained under a lot of the great masters for like eight years. I'm oh. a, I'm no slouch. The thing is, is like, you know, like if it was like no holds barred, like somebody would get hurt for sure. He would get hurt for sure. Like, I mean, yeah, there would obviously be like a referee or something. It wouldn't just be like again, a match, again. This, this is what he wants. Like, like like going, I wish guys could wake up and see, right? Like this is what he wants. Call out the fucking top dog in the fucking space. Say he's a fraud with no evidence. Okay, despite him having mountains of evidence, then start challenging him to debates and other stupid shit that he believes is a waste of time. Is going to allow him to damage control his already fucked reputation. Okay, I think he's just now really he's going to call me out for a fight so he can say I'm scared if I won't fight him. I'm scared to debate him. It's it's a Again, who is this guy? Nobody. Okay. I want everyone to imagine some random person they saw on the street today. Imagine grabbing that person off the street and going in and starting to challenge Conor McGregor and then saying Conor McGregor's scared and all this stuff. Does that make that person relevant? Does that does that make Conor McGregor scared? Again, it's like a little fucking gnat that needs to be swatted. He will be swatted very shortly legally. Okay. Again, why why he's he's like dominating, like people are all asking questions on my streams, on your streams. He's nobody. Get it through your head, guys. Okay. The man has no qualifications in game. He's not an expert on game. For some reason, he's being included on your uh, on your channel for discussions about who's the best in the game or critiquing infield, which I don't know why that's permitted since he's admitted that he's not a coach and he doesn't have any qualifications. He came in this space the same way Myron did as a personal trainer two years ago. Okay. The end, right? Who cares what he says? He can tell he can say that. You know, my entire lay count is guys, and you know, I've been secretly gay the whole time. He can say that I'm that I'm a robot, and it, and there's no such thing as John. who cares. Like, am I going to go spend, waste videos defending each and every one of this guy's dumb claims and dumb accusations? No, <laughs> he will get a fucking lawsuit. He will get a gag order, and then he will get a massive judgment on his record that will have ruined his life, and it won't have been worth it for him at that point. Okay, he thinks it's worth it at this point because he's clinging to getting some kind of relevance in the space. Okay, but he's going to be very Sorry for the actions that he's taken, you know, in the very near future. Ah, well, we'll we'll see how this whole thing unfolds. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, in terms of defending, no, I do think it's always worth it to defend yourself, if uh, the, regardless of the uh, cloud of the person. I mean, clearly people are curious because they keep asking about. It, so it's not like it's just a random, random person. It's someone that at least you can say he's unqualified, but it's someone that people are curious about their opinion. So I do always think it's worth defending that. Um, okay. I think that's basically it. Any other closing thoughts? Um, no, I just wanted to, well, how many guys we got on here? 229. Yeah. Make sure you guys hit the like button. I just want to uh, say one more time, the link in the description that Alex has in there. We're running the first ever for my company. At least I don't know if other people have done this, but we're running a two day virtual boot camp, which will entail my full cold approach training. So like every, my entire system on day game and night game, which goes far beyond what I go into on YouTube. Okay. It's like nothing held back trying to blow you guys away with value so that once you get very good from cold approach from my training, you'll want to learn how to run your dates and close your dates and build a rotation and text, build your online profile, do your online game messaging. Cause there's a lot more to it than just the cold approach portion, but it's only $27. We made it an incredibly low barrier to entry. And for a 97 upgrade, you get part of, to be part of a telegram group for me and three of my coaches, including Josh, who's going to be on tomorrow um, on my stream. We're going to help you in real time while you're out and about doing cold approach. And there's gonna be live Q and A's and all this other stuff. So just look at that link in the description. Uh, we're really excited about it. There's already a couple hundred guys that have signed up. Um, and so not, I mean, the VIP, the thing is that the VIP is the only one that gets the the chat support. That's $97, you know, it's also super cheap. Um, but yeah, we're really excited about that. So make sure you guys check out that, that link in the description. Cool guys. So we're gonna be doing a pocket or debate at eight thirty tonight with that sex slave dude, and uh, I guess there's not much <laughs> so that's gonna be interesting. So everyone, please tune in for that. That should be good. How did you How did you find this guy? Uh, they found me actually. He sent me an email. <laughs> yeah, a lot. A lot like of they, people like they found me at that gay orgy last week. <laughs> a lot. A lot of people send. Yeah, like a lot. Of, most of these people they reach out to me, not the other way around. But I never turned down a challenge. Wait, this uh, is a, a guy with a with a male sex slave. No, it's a it's a male guy. He's the sex slave, and it's a woman, female dominatrix. 
Oh. Uh, okay, yeah. so it's not like so he's, he's like the bitch, basically. Okay. It's gonna be interesting. Oh, yeah. not, I don't I don't get the whole like draw. Like like I've heard like different hot girls say over the past couple of years, like, oh, I was dating this one guy and he wanted me to fuck him with a strap on, or like, you know, I don't understand like the the draw to like the guy being dominated or like the guys that want to be cucks and get and watch their wives get fucked or anything like that. Like, like some of these guys are fucking a little off. Uh, yeah, I think it has to do with just like low self-esteem and thinking that like you're not worthy of whoever your girlfriend is and you like want, you want someone to like put you in your place or something like that. <laughs> so it's like, like a weird yeah, type of park fantasy. I don't know. Never really made it. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. I think let's call All it. Right, for an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Make sure you tune in, everybody. Bye-bye.